my wife 32 f and i 29 meters have been married 5 years and i'm starting to resent how she and her family act towards me. This is the last place i ever expected to be making a post. I'm just lurking and would appreciate any feedback anyone has to offer. April is my wife and we've been married for about 5 years. She's qualified as a teacher because she earned a master's degree. Her mother and father both hold master's degrees. Her sibling is a double bachelor degree holder no. I didn't pursue higher education. We lived comfortably in the rural south on my annual salary of around 45,000 when April and I tied the knot. A junior system administrator. That was my title at the time. Her family seemed to accept me. Despite some light jabs about my lack of a college degree. The taunting has evolved into something that now makes me feel insecure. And I have no idea how this occurred or how to adequately describe it. I can't help but hate myself because I've achieved so much. A few years ago, I started working for 65,000 annually. I couldn't have been happier to hear that April was pregnant. I was petrified too. So I went out and got a better job to help us out. She insisted on keeping her job even after giving birth. And she has. April complained that someone without a degree is making twice as much as her after she received a pay raise at her new job. She is an educator. Before we made that leap, we talked about wage parity. I encouraged her by telling her that her work is meaningful and important. I agreed with her that teachers are underpaid and advised her to go after a higher salary if it was important to her. According to what I hear, April spilled the beans to the rest of her clan about how much I was making at my new job. I felt a deep sense of disappointment. That's between the two of us. And I don't think anyone else has a right to know about it. Not long after, her brother complained that it wasn't right that he earned less than me despite having more experience in the workforce. Nothing about that made any kind of sense to me. Even her college educated sister had the same thoughts. Only she isn't a manager at her fast food restaurant where she's worked for the past 12 years. She has degrees in both psychology and creative writing. Additionally, her father remarked that I'm now more financially secure than he is. He is a state employee, and I had to assure him that he would still come out ahead thanks to his generous benefits, retirement, and so on. I don't know why I was put in the position of having to convince him. A few years have passed, and here we are. The criticism from April's relatives has intensified as my salary. Bonuses etc. have increased. They say I'm part of the one and that I should pay my fair share of taxes. Someone with my limited education has been called out for making more money than the rest of them. Many people have told me that I should buy lottery tickets because they consider me so fortunate to be paid what I am. It's starting to bug me more and more. All hell broke loose over the weekend. I completely lost it. When her father and sister visited. He brought up his brother's new girlfriend. He claimed he didn't have anything in common with her because he has nothing to say to those kinds of people. Referring to the fact that she was uneducated. My patience ran out when he said this in front of me. I smiled and gritted my teeth for what felt like 5 years before it finally all came crashing down. My being combative with April's relatives must have come out of the blue for them. As I have never been combative with them before. So. After I told him I was uneducated by his standards. He has nothing to say to me either. He made some flimsy excuse like well, that's different. You have experience. And I pointed out that the other girl did too. I told him it was extremely condescending to dismiss people simply because they didn't share his educational background. I also told him that the snide remarks about my salary and lack of a college degree were unwelcome. And that I would appreciate it if they could keep their envy in check the next time they visited the house. That my lack of higher education helps to pay for. At the same time, I felt terrible and fantastic. In silence, they departed. And April ripped me off big time. That I was being unfair. She said. I told her that the constant parallels to Donald Trump were getting old. Unfortunately, I'm not filthy rich. I'm able to support my family comfortably with my income. I'm very pleased with that. In addition to giving my daughter the world, I love nothing more than spending time with her. I told her that the way she and her family had been treating me had severely damaged my sense of self-worth and that I didn't appreciate it. In addition, 
I was not going to sit around while her dad came over acting like a jerk well. That's just how my dad is. She mused. Even worsens. In fact. The fact that I have to say this is the worst part makes me feel bad. Just recently. I started working at a new company. Over the past few years. I've invested personally in improving my skills at by attending conferences. Meeting new people. Taking on extra responsibilities at work etc. After much deliberation, I decided to join a cloud service provider as their senior system architect. They provided me with a generous salary of 105k annually and a month off. In addition, my wife basically made me feel terrible about myself. She sobbed uncontrollably at the thought of it. I can't have her happy. She said verbatim. I don't even know how to explain that. Even though she has a degree and I have nothing. She expressed sadness that I will be making two, five times as much as she is. To be honest, I was at a loss for words. Once it had time to think about it, I told her she shouldn't be happy for me. I tried to reassure her that she ought to be pleased with us. I also suggested that if she was unhappy at work, she should consider quitting so that she could spend more time with our daughter. Otherwise, get a part-time job. The sick part about this is that I'm beginning to believe the nonsense her family has been saying. Perhaps I'm not deserving of the salary increase that comes with my new position. For some reason, I always assumed that those who had higher education were superior to those of us who did not. Furthermore, I believe April has been conditioned to believe the same thing. Despite how my story might make her sound, she's not a bad person. In contrast, I believe her family has pushed the you must go to college or you will be a complete failure line. And she doesn't know how to reconcile the idea that someone who didn't go to college isn't a complete failure. College is not something I'm knocking. I do not have anything against higher education. In retrospect, I regret not going on to higher education. Without a degree, I'm not naive enough to believe that I was not met with more resistance or that it would not take me longer to break into this field. It's important to me that my daughter get a college education. To put it simply, I wasn't ready for it at that point in my life. And I had to make the best of a bad situation. Here are my three serious inquiries. How do I stop myself from coming to believe this nonsense in my own head? The best way I can put it is that words fail me. While I'm aware on an intellectual level that their BS is untrue. A small but persistent voice of doubt has begun to undermine my self-assurance. Having achieved professional success, I'm now beginning to feel guilty. When it comes to April and I, how do we find common ground? Our marriage has weathered some storms, but we always manage to come out on the other side stronger, though I know it's for her own good. I'm starting to feel bad about always giving my professional best. Perhaps I'm being overly protective of her by shifting the finger of blame to her family. It broke my heart when she said she couldn't be happy for me because my new job would take us farther away from our mutual friends and families. How should I approach her relatives? I'm not normally combative. So I'm ashamed of my reaction to her father's sly remark the other day. I told April that I didn't need an apology, but that she should make it clear that her family won't be welcome at my house if they weren't going to be respectful of both of us when they came over. And I felt like the way they've been treating me shows no respect for either her or myself. In a nutshell, I made it in life without a formal education. However, my wife's family has treated me so horribly that I feel I should feel guilty about my success and that I don't deserve it. In other words, rest in peace mls in my inbox. I mean, holy crap. I value your help tremendously. The relief I feel from this is incredible. There are two things. To those who will say this is made up, this doesn't happen in real life, etc. Really, I do hope so. At the very least, I hope I provided some amusement. Consider pursuing a degree in creative writing. For the rest of you. Thank you so much. There is a great deal of solid guidance. My wife and I are going to have a serious conversation about this. And I have a lot of useful information to share. That doesn't mean I set out to make her look bad. In my opinion, she is not. I think she's just having a hard time accepting that the information she was taught growing up in school and at university isn't always correct. She seems to be exhausted by her job too. 
I'm aware that many American educators are struggling to cope with the widespread implementation of the Common Core state standards. To be perfectly honest, I don't know enough about it to form an informed opinion. I can tell that it bothers her a lot. The birth of our daughter three years ago also made us new parents. She's questioning some of her most fundamental convictions. And I think there's just a lot going on right now that's contributing to it. There's just a lot happening right now. I hope that my approach to this with her is proper. A ridiculous number of people have asked me privately. How do I get to where you are? My desire to respond to everyone has resulted in my endless repetition of the same points. Remember that technology has come a long way since 2006. It's more advanced, more quick to adapt, and more efficient. It grows at a rapid rate. In place of a rigid do this this, and this, and you will succeed list. I will share some advice, based on my own experience, that I believe to be timeless and applicable regardless of context. I was always on the lookout for what I like to call bridge jobs. The bridge connects the two worlds. One that the traveler knows well, and the other that is foreign and mysterious. And takes you past an obstacle that seemed insurmountable. First, I want a position that matches my skills. The resume is not the place to exaggerate your qualifications. You should not tell untruths during the interview. Once you have progressed past entry level positions in technology, technical interview panels are inevitable. In this interview, you will be put through your paces. Further, B will enlighten you to something you didn't know before. You must learn something new in this role. That's the connection, or the bridge between two places. The bridge can be crossed using your current set of skills as a springboard for learning something new. You shouldn't look down because it's terrifying, but you should keep going. When you have settled into your new home, it is time to begin building that bridge once more. I'm sure there's a more thorough explanation elsewhere, but this is how I pictured it. I'm a visual learner. This is why I enjoy studying network architecture and diagrams. And network? No. I don't mean you should study networking concepts like routing and subnetting, or implement VPN encryption protocols. What I mean is to connect with other IT pros in your area. A great deal of it will emerge in the course of regular interactions with clients. In job interviews, amongst coworkers etc., you should instead attend regional tech conferences. Over the years, you will encounter a surprising number of familiar faces. My first online search was how do I get into it, and I found a tech forum. There was another new guy who I became intermittently friendly with over the years. Do you know what? He currently works for my future employer. Before today, we had never met each other. We live in a very small world. I've participated in job interviews before. What do you think? People I interviewed with are already working here. Keep in touch with these individuals. Consider enlisting the help of a seasoned professional. In my life, this was a major event. Lucky for me, while working as a help desk guy. A senior exchange windows administrator took me under his wing and taught me the ropes to train me. He gave me simple tasks to complete and help me through any problems that arose for me. That was the key to making the move from help desk to system administrator many moons ago. He eventually left for a bigger company, Rackspace, but we still keep in touch now and then typically during baseball season. Speaking of which, do not, under any circumstances, embellish your resume. This is disastrous for your tech career, especially if you live in a city with a limited job market. It would be impossible for me to count the number of people I have interviewed who have included something on their resume because they thought it looked good there. No further interviews were granted to that individual. Don't forget to include your own personal achievements. The IT interview process consists of a panel of experts or at least I have. Moving from an administrative or operations role into engineering typically involves lots of whiteboarding. Defend your choice to implement systems in this particular way. Your own beliefs and assumptions will be challenged. They'll keep pushing you until you hit a wall you can't see over. And if you don't know something, just admit it. Much more valuable than someone who has no fear of the unknown is someone who is aware of their own limitations and is able to find a solution. My current position which I will soon be leaving has the potential to cost my company millions of dollars if something goes wrong. That's not a huge stretch of the imagination. I'm not a manager. So take this with a grain of salt. But if you don't have a college degree, 
You're not going to get very far in today's interview process. It's important to me to find someone with initiative and drive. Start by earning some basic credentials in your intended field of study. Engaged in networking. There's a good reason Cisco has such a large market share. Obtaining certifications like CCENT and CCNA can open doors. I hear you're looking for some dudes to fill the role of server. If you want to prove your competence, you should pursue Windows or Linux certifications. Red Hat is a popular flavor. I have my RHCA and it has helped a bit. Appreciate the use of virtual machines. Virtualization software such as VMware and Microsoft's Hyper-V. To sum up, certify yourself also. Don't be embarrassed to start your career in a support role at a help desk or on a desktop. But the next question is, what do you do when you actually get that job? It's important to display enthusiasm and skill. The help desk here has 40 dedicated employees. 30 of them will always play that part. 10 of them have some real potential. 2 have actually come to me for assistance. That's why I'm doing what was done to me 7 years ago. Because of me. They were able to get by. When I assign them tasks. I tend to keep them on the smaller side. They can add done in an enterprise environment to their resume and gain valuable experience in the process. Both of those dudes are integral members of our system team. When I leave. One of them will probably take my place as that good. Bridge jobs. Networking. And finding a mentor all apply here. Participate actively. Since so many people helped me out, and I know I can help them out in return, I figured it was only fair to offer some advice.